So today I want to talk to you about applying spiritual laws to your business to increase clients and revenue. So today I want to talk to you about applying spiritual laws to your business to increase clients and revenue. So this is something that I have incorporated into my business model ever since I started to become aware of working with spiritual laws in a practical way starting in 2013. And I want to share with you a little bit um, background on how I've utilized this in multiple businesses, not just my spiritual coaching business, which is online right now, but I've used these techniques with brick and mortar business and even my real estate business. And so I just want to share with you a quick story because... When you work with spiritual laws in a practical way, you're going to be able to exponentially grow your business. And there's not gonna necessarily be any rhyme or reason to why it's working out for you. It just is because you are harnessing the energies that create everything and using them in your favor instead of just um, being in reactionary mode. But I wanted to share a quick story with you. Um, I think it was like 2014, 2013, 2014. So this was when, yeah, 2013 and 14, during the onset of my spiritual awakening, I was working with the spiritual law of intention and I was guided to open up a spray tanning studio. It was something that I was always into because I was into anti-aging and sunless tanning, but all the places around me, I didn't really like the way the color looked. It always looked a little orange to me. So I researched because I thought they were quite toxic, the chemicals, and I was an organic foodie. So, and I was all into non-toxic cosmetics. So I researched the best brand that was organic, non-GMO, paraben free, erythralose free, like all of it free, right? And I opened up a spray tanning studio near me, which is a brick and mortar business. Um, and there was, uh, because all of the other locations around me basically had toxic chemicals. But um, the intention that I set when I opened up the business I was already into energy healing. I was a Reiki master at that time, um, learning all about energy. So I did some Reiki clearing inside the studio and I set the intention that every woman that entered the building was going to leave feeling more beautiful, more confident, and more empowered than when they walked through the door. And that was my intention. And I watched very quickly my my spray tanning business explode very quickly, like lots of reviews, lots of Yelp reviews, um, lots of clients. I think I had over like 700 clients within a very short period of time, uh, within a few months. And the grand opening was a great success and I was getting a ton of referral business and people were telling all their friends about it. And I had a revolving door of regulars and new women coming all the time during, you know, times of stress and times of celebration. So some were coming to me because they wanted to feel more beautiful because they suffered from skin cancer. They don't want to be out in the sun, but they wanted to have some color. Others would come to me because they were getting engaged or they were about to be married, you know. So they were all different kinds of life circumstances that brought them to me. But I truly believe because of the intention that was set that that is why my business thrived. And here's why. First off, because I had that intention and because I'm a natural teacher and healer by nature, every woman that showed up um, in that space naturally would have conversations flowing that would be really aha moments for them, um, really set with them and resonate with them on a deep level. And I recognize that so many of our conversations were turning to self-acceptance and self-love and beauty from the inside out. And I quickly realized, eventually I realized, you know, that this was great and I was great with working with women and being this source of empowerment, um, this message, this catalyst for growth. Uh, for women specifically. And so I feel like that's why I was guided to have that experience. It served me well. 
Um, it wasn't something that I was going to continue forever. I already started to have dreams of expanding it outside of that into really having a health and wellness beauty business that's that specializes in so much more than just the exterior, right? And and who knows? That's still something that's a seed in the back of my mind. But I knew it was a transition and it was a journey that I was supposed to go on. And I got really good experience working with women directly. And it sort of sparked a fire in me because I recognized my ability to help coach other women because that's really like, especially the regulars that were coming to me, it was very much like seeking advice um, in a very spiritual way and a very, you know, you know, they were asking questions and as a channel, I didn't even realize that's what I was doing at the time until I fully opened up to channeling later in 2014. But I didn't realize that the guidance that was coming through that, that I was just guided to share for no reason whatsoever um, was resonating with people, which is exactly what happens on my coaching calls now and in my programs. So long story short, I set those intentions. When I sold the business because it was time to move on, um, the person, the woman that took it over, that bought it, um, she kept the same marketing in place. She kept the same specials. She kept the same website. She kept the same services. She kept the same products. Everything stayed the same. I even offered to train her on my techniques, policies, and procedures and everything for 90 days after the sale. And so she learned every Everything that I knew, I gave to her. Everything that was tangible, every you know asset of the business, and everything that was in my head, I shared with her. But I noticed when I researched her online a little bit later, she went out of business shortly after the sale. It was maybe like six months or something like that. Why is that? What changed? I can tell you because I know the background that the intentions weren't necessarily the same. Now, I don't know her specific intentions. I can't speak for her, but I know that she was looking for more of a way to create another source, another passive, another income stream, something that she could hire someone to do and that someone else could run it for her and it would be another passive income stream because she had some money to invest, which is fine. Passive income streams are cool. I love passive income streams and I love multiple streams of income. But what was different was that the level of intention behind the practice, behind the business. And it was the same thing with real estate. When I worked in the real estate industry, it wasn't just about selling a house or helping someone purchase or, or sell a property. It was about being a catalyst in somebody's experience and helping them exponentially have like the greatest experience and um, being a critical piece of that puzzle for them and always operating from the highest intention. But when it came to even generating revenue, I would work with spiritual laws, calling it in, setting the intention, calling in, for example, you know, I remember one month I was like, it'd be really nice to have a deal closed by the end of this month that I don't already have on the board. And this was already like five or seven days into the month. And everybody knows in real estate, if you know anything about real estate, it takes at least 30 days usually to close a deal unless it's a cash deal. But if it's a finance deal, it's usually at least 30 days minimum from start to finish for escrow. That's the standard. Obviously, I have lenders that can work a lot quicker than that. But um, I should say I had lenders that can work a lot quicker than that. I don't do it anymore. But um, that's the standard. And so logically, one would think it's not possible to close another deal if you don't get a cash offer like pretty soon in order for it to close by the end of the month. However, um, about 24 hours after setting that intention, I got a call from my ISA and she said, there's this couple, they really like this house, they wanna go see it, they're already pre-qualified, they're ready to write, um, and they want, can you show this? And I was like, sure, and I went and showed it. And even though all the properties were getting multiple offers, we saw there was happens to be no offers on this property, even though it was pristine. And we put an offer in within a couple of hours after that and it got accepted first time, no counter. And that was pretty unheard of because it was a really competitive market to even have the house with no offers on it after it was already live for a few days um, was already unheard of, let alone the fact that you know, we got it and they didn't even counter us and we went under contract right away and it was like in perfect condition. 
and um, it didn't even dawn on me. They wanted to close, oh, by the way, right away because they were being, uh, their the house that they were living in was being sold as, by the end of the month, so they had to move ASAP. And so they wrote a very quick escrow. And even though it was a finance deal, we closed before the end of the month. And it didn't even dawn on me that I manifested that transaction until the very end when I was giving the keys to the client. And we were standing outside in front of the house. And he's like, you know, this is just perfect. This is exactly what we were looking for. You know, it's got the house. It's right on the corner. There's plenty of room to drive the RV in the back and to park, you know, all of their extra toys, you know, that they wanted. And it still is in like perfect proximity to where they wanted, you know, the, the rest of the community layout, you know, so it wasn't too close to the mailboxes. You know, it was like every single thing that they wanted lined up for them. And when I was having them, when I was handing them the keys are like was this the easiest transaction that you've ever done and I was like it's not the easiest or the quickest I've had quicker I mean because I've had cash deals close in five days with you know like super super quick but I was like actually now that you mention it for a finance deal I mean it really doesn't get any easier or quicker than this and as I was handing him to the key, the keys, I was like, oh my God, I totally manifested this. I forgot that I manifested it. That's the intention that I set like three weeks, two and a half weeks earlier. And now it had manifested in the uh, result of me handing the keys that were the perfect match for them. And so this is the key that I want to share with you. It wasn't only the perfect match for me, it was everything that I asked for, despite logical and analytical reasoning, where if I would have gotten in my head like any other normal realtor that's not working with spiritual laws, I would have thought, well, this is impossible. Well, I don't have a cash deal, so that's not gonna happen. I have to get a cash deal within the next few days, or, you know, like I would have already had all of the reasons why it wasn't possible to close a deal that quickly by the end of the month, let alone a financed one. Um, but it was also the perfect scenario for them. It was the house they wanted, it was the layout they wanted, it was in perfect condition, it was at the price they wanted, the yard was the perfect layout, the landscaping was the perfect layout, it was in perfect proximity to the mailboxes, it had the perfect um, oversized lot so they could park because they had RV privileges and all of that kind of stuff. It was perfect for them. And this is what I wanna stress with you. When it's perfect for you, it's perfect for your alignment, your aligned clients. When you're in alignment, everyone else is rendezvousing with you in alignment. This is why I always say when you are in alignment, you're going to attract your soulmate clients, period, done, end of story. So if you wanna relate this to your coaching business, because I apply these same principles now to my spiritual coaching business, when I'm in alignment, I know that my clients, my soulmate clients are gonna pop up and it's gonna be perfect alignment for them as well. They're gonna be asking for this. They're gonna be looking for something like this. They're gonna be calling it in on their end. They're gonna stumble upon me just randomly. They're not even gonna know how they found my profile, but they're gonna resonate with my videos or they're gonna resonate with my posts. They're gonna intuitively know on some level that we need to work together. It's gonna be easy breezy. The sales call is gonna go smooth. Everything's gonna be amazing and fabulous. And that's just how it's gonna go. And that's what I call in and that's what I verbalize to the universe in my mind and externally I speak it into existence just like I did the real estate deal just like I did all the women with the at the studio that I wanted to have this amazing experience my intention was always of the highest and greatest good for all involved it was never what's in it up for me like the woman that I sold the studio to right? It was never in, it was never a one-sided thing. It was never just what it's about, what's in it for me. It's, it, it's mutually beneficial. It's of the highest intention. It's of the highest integrity. Um, and there's a knowingness there and a, and a trusting that's there. And there's a releasing of the attachment to the outcome. So I didn't even realize that I manifested that deal until I handed them the keys two and a half weeks later. That's how unattached I was to the manifestation. That's how unattached I am to the clients that I manifest now for Sacred Leader Academy. And that's how unattached I was when I manifested like a revolving door of women that like were like always referring me new business and are constantly expanding my brick and mortar where usually you have to like wait a long time to start to make your money back. I was already profitable by within the first 90 days. I had made all of my initial investment back and, and then some. So this is the moral of the story. When you're in alignment, everything else falls into place. And when you work from the highest intention and when you work with spiritual laws in a practical way, everything falls into place.
That's all you have to concern yourself with. Namaste.